Hi, um, thank you for turning up at this ridiculous hour in the morning. It's a little early for Spain, I think. Um, so, as Harold says, I'm from AKQA, and I'm going to firstly talk to you about two or three case studies um, that talk about our breadth and depth of UI and service design. But before I do that, a little bit about who AKQA is. So, for those of us who, those of you who don't know us, we are an ideas and innovation company, so answering any problem that our clients come to us with, from um, in car connected, through to connected products, through to big digital ecosystems. And we do that by ensuring that we're always creating meaningful innovation and meaningful ideas. As I said, I'm going to take you through three case studies, but because it's early, I'm going to start off with a little short show reel that shows you a little bit of AKQA's work. So there are some amazing products in there and some amazing client relationships that we've built up over the years. But I want to talk to you about three different stories and how we've approached service design on those. And starting with TUI. So TUI is a global brand. They own 270 sub-brands. Now that's a big company. And you don't normally associate a company of that size with the words lean, agile, startup, or anything like that. And I think it's safe to say that the package holiday industry hasn't necessarily been that digitally focused over the past few years. But with TUI, and with all holiday companies, their clients are changing, and their clients are expecting them to deliver relevant and meaningful digital experiences. So they needed to evolve, and they did need to evolve pretty quickly. So they set us a challenge. I think you're meant to call this a brief, but to me it seemed more like a challenge. They wanted a fully functioning um, travel app for one of their brands initially that would work on iOS, but a couple of weeks later needed to be cross-platform. They enhanced both the pre-travel and vacation experience of two e-customers. And if we could deliver that and get that live in the app store within six weeks. So that's quite a big ask for a brand that you've never worked with and you don't know anything about. In order to get that right, we needed to start with a vision. Uh, we needed a vision that was going to keep us on track and keep us very tight on track. Um, and as you can expect, I'm head of user experience, we obviously started with the customer. So we started off by understanding that entire holiday life cycle. Everything from browse, inspire, book, search, all of the exploration elements of understanding a holiday, and then everything in destination. Two is a package holiday company, so they're obviously looking to upsell, cross-sell, and make people have the most amazing experience possible whilst on their holiday. So we started with that vision, and we decided to create an app that would allow people to, at the touch of a button, see everything about the holiday that they've booked. Um, and then on top of that, to be able to edit it, change it, to have the best experience possible when updating their holiday. This meant we needed to be hooked into TUI's live booking systems, again, all in six weeks. So how do we do it? Well, we changed the rules of an agency-client relationship a little bit. Um, we broke the rules, we cut the crap, we cut out documentation, got rid of anything that might get in the way of us actually delivering a product, and ended up um, working day-to-day -day delivering live code. So every day, having something on your device that you could play with, you could see, and you could explore. Then on top of that, um, we removed any sort of hierarchy within the team. We got rid of anything that was going to get in the way. So no sort of designer, senior designer, art director, creative director, executive creative director. Everybody's job was to get this app out the door. Small team of six people, AKQA folk, and a few of the clients in one room together. And we took an approach that, again, you often don't see in the agency-client relationship. We took the approach of getting something done that was going to be better than making something perfect. Normally, in an agency-client relationship, you see the most amazing, perfect solutions delivered on beautiful boards and beautiful decks. We took the approach of getting something on the phone, something you could play with, was going to be better than having final, perfect, creative every time. But obviously, that's a fine balance, right? Because done may be better than perfect, but done is certainly not better than crap. So we needed to make sure that what we were getting out there was good enough, was going to be right. 
And we did that. The guys got it out there within six weeks and in the app store with a few little sort of backhanders to Apple, I think, along the way. Um, and then very quickly, that needed to evolve. So as I said, TUI had 270 brands, and they needed to see that moving across all of their brands very quickly. Now, obviously, we haven't launched it across all 270. That would be insane. But um, what we have been doing is working in similar six-week chunks, taking that core requirement set, looking at the requirements of a different brand, so for Minor TUI, for Crystal Ski, for Le Beau, for first choice for all of the brands within TUI's, uh, TUI's set and understanding how we can turn that one solution base into a broader ecosystem, maintaining all of those principles of a startup along the way, so continually evolving and continually getting something out there. So I think the big problem for us, or the big thing that we learned, was the size or the perception of the initial problem. And the perception of the initial problem was the complete holiday, six weeks, 270 brands, was not actually the problem that we needed to solve. And it doesn't matter whether you are already in a startup, whether you're a global agency, or whether you're Vodafone, Nokia, whoever, you can be creating, you can act like a startup by being nimble and forgetting about the silver bullet. The silver bullet doesn't matter when you're designing. What matters is getting the right thing at the right time. So let's talk briefly about Nike. Nike is an amazing, awesome brand. They deliver beautiful experiences, beautiful product, and they've got the sort of brand that you can just talk about and people will love them or hate them in some cases. They're a little bit Marmite. Um, but Nike's are not just about shipping products out, they're not just about shoes, boots, amazing kit, they actually have an ultimate goal, and their ultimate goal is to democratize athleticism. They want everyone to be an athlete, even me, they haven't succeeded yet, but they want everyone to be able to be an athlete. So Nike saw, Nike and AKQA saw an opportunity to create the world's first personal trainer on your mobile phone, and they came up with NTC hundreds of hours of um, workouts, routines, all hooked into Nike's fuel ecosystem. But I guess the big question is, why would you want to do this? This is already an overpopulated market. There are hundreds of fitness apps out there already. I think I've got five on my phone. I don't use any of them. Um, there are hundreds of fitness apps out there. But for Nike, and I think it's worth mentioning, NTC is a woman's fitness app. They started with two insights, and they started with the fact that they had the credentials to do this. And the two insights were very simple. Um, personal trainers, they're pretty scary. Personal trainers are pretty daunting. You don't go to a gym to have fun with your personal trainer. They are not designed to be fun and friendly people. They're designed to make you work hard. And most women we spoke to don't like them. The fact going to a gym generally is a little bit scary. Going to a gym and dealing with one of these personal trainers is even scarier. But to get a training program that's going to work for you in the time that you've got for your motivational needs to fix the problems that you might have actually kind of needs a personal trainer. Otherwise, you won't get it right. So we took those two insights, and Nike took the fact that they have the credentials in order to do this, and we started creating NTC. Now, obviously, as head of UX, I'm always talking about how the consumer comes first. We always listen to what the user wants. But interestingly, with NTC, we listen to a different target audience. We listen to the Nike's pro trainers. Out in Portland, they've got hundreds of professional trainers whose job it is to design the best and most perfect training program for you, for whoever you are. We worked really closely with those guys. Whereas on TUI, we didn't get to go on holiday to experience that full holiday life cycle. On NTC, we did get to experience Nike's pro trainers. And the ugly bunch at the top there, that's them. I think that's pre-workout. They're looking OK at the moment. Um, we did get to experience Nike's training program. To get that understanding from, as a user, how does it feel like? How do I understand it? Do I know if I'm doing a plank correctly? And then from a trainer's point of view, how can I explain this to someone who isn't in front of me? How can I tell them how to do a plank correctly? How can I make sure people know what they're doing? So the entire app, MTC, was built around Nike's training team, built around their understanding of building the right training program, but also built around their understanding of how we can explain these big problems to people and, again, what those digital pain points are. And I think it's fair to say that training isn't something that actually is a digital solution. Training is a real-world solution. So we need to look at where could digital support on top of that and looking at where the technology could help us along the way. We're not creating an app for the sake of it. We're creating an app that allows you to have a Nike trainer in your home. And there are elements where digital can help you. Digital can potentially tell you how to do a plank correctly. 
And along the way, we needed to evolve. So we make sure that we connect with those real world experiences. It's not digital for the sake of it. It's understanding the proper problems out there. And in this case, it was how do you get a personal trainer to teach you how to train properly. And we keep evolving. So as you launch something, and you will know this, once you launch something, you've got to keep on changing it and keep on growing. And when you launch it, it's then, um, it's then about change. So you look at the technology and how the technology is evolving and how you can then grow on top of that. So now we can use a phone to actually show you whether you're doing a plank correctly by placing it under you. So finally, and very quickly, because I know I'm running out of time, Philips and connecting people, connecting products even. So connected products is, and I think Lars is going to talk about it a little bit more later, connecting products is an awesome space to work in as a designer. It's brilliant. There's loads of awesome opportunities, great stuff you can do, really brilliant to work alongside a physical product and a digital product and connect those two together. But it's also, unfortunately, a place full of horrible mistakes and sort of a landfill of horrendous solutions. I think if you look at Nike Fuel, Fitbit, Nest, those sort of things, they're beautiful, they're amazing. The eye kettle, I'm not sure I need to connect a kettle, but you know, there's, there's various elements where there's an amazing experience, but actually people are making a lot of big mistakes. So when Philips came to us and said, we want to connect five of our products, and we'd like to do that by IFA in September, the big question for us is, are we doing the right thing here? Um, are these products right? Does people really need a connected coffee machine? Trying to understand whether we're doing the right thing. So before we even started designing, before we really even accepted that these five products in Philips Roadmap were the right ones, we started off with a hackathon. Before we put pen to paper, we prototyped. We got the kit in-house. We got a coffee machine, a baby monitor, all of the stuff, put a chip in it, started working on it, started designing from it, hacking it effectively. So at the end of five days, we have tested five or six different concepts. And we know, with Philips, that we're developing something that's going to add real consumer value. And along the way, we had a few learnings. So um, this is a baby monitor, hence the baby. Um, we had a few learnings. Firstly, you're working now in a world of hardware, and that hardware has been through about four to five years of product development. You can't change that anymore. You are stuck with what they've given you, and you're stuck with the fact that they've put one button on it, and you need to make that button connect with your phone. You also need to make it feel like one holistic solution. So many of these connected products start off with, over here we have the amazing piece of hardware and it looks like this, and over here we have um, one experience that looks like this. So we needed to mush these two together and make sure that we're learning from the hardware developers and are building something that's adding real value and is building something that feels like one holistic solution. And then finally, we came up with a couple of secondary use cases where digital really adds value. So when you're looking at a connected product, you're starting off with the primary use case. And the primary use case for a baby monitor is sit in lounge, see baby, baby's crying. I'm not a mother, so I don't really understand this stuff. But there was a clear secondary use case, and I'm being hurried up. There was a clear secondary use case, which is around remote users. So a lot of the guys in the hackathon with us were young parents. Their babies were at home. They would have been shipped out to Amsterdam. Why can't we use the baby monitor, using the full extent of digital to allow you to FaceTime your baby, to read stories to it, to extend further? So for us, Philips was all about creating the right connections, not adding to this quagmire of slightly dubious connected products, and by making sure those connections are invisible. So whatever you're doing on digital and whatever the hardware is doing, those two things need to feel like one and the same. Thank you.